Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 61. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. And in this video, we want to see how to create a uh, finished invoice like this. So we can just uh, select an item here, whatever it is, and it calculates uh, the, the total, subtotal, etc. So we want to see how to create that invoice. Now I've already done a little typing here. Put the word invoice at the top. Here's the uh, uh, company name. Here's the ship to, invoice number, and date. Now here's a list of all the things. We'll just do them one by one. First, I'm going to uh, highlight and uh, center this cross selection and, and increase the font. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control-1. I'm going to go to Alignment. And instead of merge and center, I'm going to use horizontal center cross selection. Go over to border and say outline. Fill, I'll do a dark color. Font, um, something like 16. And maybe some nice font. I am not so good with font, but something that's kind of fancy. I don't know what. That's not very fancy at all. Gives you a, a preview here. All right, I'm going to select that one. Ooh, I got the wrong font color, so I'm going to go to white. All right, um, now all of the uh, headers, in essence, or the labels, I'm going to color dark blue and white. So I'm going to hold my Control key and select no cells that are not next to each other called non-contiguous cells. I'm going to click that drop down font color white and maybe a, a border. Now for an invoice, we're going to need a few different things. We need um, item purchased. And then we're going to need quantity. And then we're going to need price each. Remember, uh, the items in these columns are going to be somewhat automatic. And then line item total. I'm going to highlight all of those. Hit the F7 key since I'm such a bad uh, speller. And then I'm going to add some formatting, some fill like that. All right, now items purchased. I'm going to highlight maybe this many. You can highlight as few or as many as you want and add a border. And now, down below here, I have, and in the last couple of videos, we saw how to calculate uh, wholesale cost. And I went ahead and had my list, my trade discount, and calculated wholesale cost. But we would like all of these names. We don't want to have to type them in or even worry how to which ones we have. We want a drop down in this cell. So we can click the drop down, and it knows to select from this list here. Then over under price each, we want to use, and we've seen this one other time in this class, the VLOOKUP function to look up the product and tell us what the price is. All right, so the first thing is we want to create a drop-down list in each cell that gives us a list of the product names. It's really quite easy in Excel. You go up to Data, Data Validation. Now, validation means it has to be true, right? I'm going to click Data Validation, Data Validation. And what has to be true is whatever I go in the cell has to be from down in this list. So instead of allowing any value, I'm going to allow a list. And in the source, totally awesome. I can come down here and highlight the cells. Is that totally cool? So that source. Now look at this. It says in cell drop down. I'm going to click OK. And now, lo and behold, not only that, but it's dynamic. If I come down here, go. Right? And then I come up here, it now has changed. Now I'm going to undo that. So now it says quad there. All right, so we'll select those two. Now quantity, there's nothing special there. We'll have to type that in. But price. And now I'm going to add um, some green here on the invoice. You wouldn't do that, but that's just for this class to indicate that it is a um, the formula here. All right? So let's put quantity 5, and then uh, Bellens, we bought 10. So price each. Well, let's think about this. And we saw this earlier in the class. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. And 
and um, let's just think about how we do this by hand. I'm going to have, I want to ultimately have a formula here. I'm going to look here. I'm going to put the quad in my brain. Now I'm scrolling down. I know where the table is, right? So then I look through the table. Oh, I find the quad. I jump over, and let me zoom in a little bit. I find the quad. I jump over to the second column. I remember that it's 1724. I come back over here, and I type 17.24. Now, if I had a formula, I would have to say, hey, formula, please remember that it's Bellin we're looking up. So I'm putting that in my brain. I'm coming over here. I find a match for Bellin. I jump over to the second column. I take 1389, and I bring it back, and I put it in the cell. So I don't want to have to do that every time, especially since I want to be able to just change this to whatever and have it automatically update. And ultimately, actually, in the working world, you know, there's lots of programs, QuickBooks, Oracle, that do invoicing automatically, right? But a lot of people do their invoicing in Excel, and this is how they do it. They love this data validation dropdown. I'm going to go back to this quad. And they love the VLOOKUP function. So here we go. Let me see if I can zoom in again. Uh, that may not work here. Let me just do it this way. So the, the function we use is VLOOKUP. And it's called V because the table that we're looking up things up in is orientated vertically. And LOOKUP because we're going to look something up. LOOKUP value, I need to tell the VLOOKUP what I want it to go look up. It needs to go and find the quad down there, right? Comma. Just as we did it by hand. We need to tell the VLOOKUP where the table is. First has the thing that it will try and match, right? Second is the number that we need to throw back in the cell. Remember, what the VLOOKUP's job is to throw something into the cell, right? What? The price. Now I need to lock this. So I'm going to hit my F4 key, because this is a formula. And as I copy it down, the table needs to be locked, but the blue one needs to always move. Okay, so table, comma, two. You got to tell the VLOOKUP which of the columns has the thing you want to throw back in the cell. Two. That means VLOOKUP knows to get the, the number from the second column and throw it back into the cell. Now, comma, and earlier in the class we did uh, VLOOKUP, but we didn't do an ex what's called an exact match. That means we're looking up a word. We want to find exactly quad. Now, you can either put false, just double click it. And that'll work fine. Or you can put a 0. For those of you that are learning, pick, uh, just double click this list. And then when you want an exact match, you put false. All right, now let's see if that works. Control Enter. I'm going to copy it just down to here. Now I'm going to change this. Carlota doublers. So I go down here. No way, Carlota doublers. That is just amazing. Right? So now we've totally automated our invoice. Choose anything from this drop down, which is looking down at the table, and it pulls the price, which is looking down at the table. Now maybe I'll um, add some uh, currency, Control Shift 4. Now, before we worry about what to do down here, let's see if we can finish this, all right? Oh, once we know the quantity and the price, it's easy. We do round this times this, comma 2. Now that is just totally awesome. Not only will our drop down list, I'll select um, Sunshine 10 ply, 5, 10, 25 each, and there's the line total. All right, now let's go ahead and copy this down and see what happens. Not available. Well, let's look at this formula. Not available is handy. It tells us, tells us what? VLOOKUP is trying to look up nothing. There's an empty cell. It can't find that down in the table. So we're going to do just like we did back with our checkbook. If this cell is empty, I would like to throw a blank in the cell. Otherwise, if it's not empty, please show the formula, VLOOKUP. Right? I'm going to come up here. 
And I'm going to edit this. I'm going to click right before the equal sign. And remember, this whole column gets one of two things. It either gets the VLOOKUP, or if there's nothing over here, it needs a blank. So every cell is getting one of two things, VLOOKUP or nothing, which is a blank. All right? so you ready? Let's do this. Anytime there's one of two things that go into the cell, the IF function is perfect. And our, our language kind of helps out, right? If this is empty, then something, otherwise something. So that means we're going to use the IF function. Logical test. That's something that comes out true or false. So we ask the question, is that cell, relative cell reference, is it equal to and blank? We saw this with our checkbook register early in the class. Blank is double quote, double quote. This is a logical test. Logical, actually, let me type a comma. Logical test right here. It either comes out true or false. Is it equal to blank or is it not? All right, right now, it, of course, will say false. But when we copy the formula down, this will be blank. What do we want there? Blank. So the value if true, meaning the thing is blank, double quote, double quote, comma. And then the value of false, that means there's something there, the VLOOKUP. We come to the end. Close parentheses. Now that is an awesome formula for an invoice. Control Enter and double, double click and send it down. Now let's just try this. Mm, OK, so I'm going to go all the way down and select a uh, Icarus MTA. Oh, that is amazing. Now instead of a blank there, there's a VLOOKUP looking up the price for Icarus. Let me type like 2 here, right? Now, what about this? Let's copy this one, this formula here. Let's copy it all the way down. Value error means it's taking blank and multiplying it by 0 in essence. That just means there's nothing there, right? Because we put that double quote, and that this, this formula doesn't like that double quote. No problem. We'll do the same thing. Remember, if that cell is equal to blank, then blank, otherwise, that. So let's try it. Edit mode. If, and what's our logical test? If no one has entered an item, which means that cell, relative cell reference, equal to double quote. If there's nothing there, that's the logical test. If it's true, what do we want? Nothing or a blank. Double quote, double quote. Comma, otherwise, what do we want? The value of false? Oh, just do the round calculation, the multiplying. Now we come to the end. We close parentheses, Control-Enter, and double-click and send it down. Now let's try it. This is the magic of Excel and doing invoicing, right? I'm, we're going to buy some Majestic Buttes. People like the long-distance ones. And we're buying 15 of them, just like that. So I select. I don't even have to type the product. I just select. Type in the quantity, and everything's calculated. All right, now we have a few other things that we need. Shipping terms, terms. Now I'm going to, and then over here, we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then over here, we're going to have subtotal. Shipping, and you could have some other items here. You could have a, this is going to be a wholesale uh, invoice only, but absolutely, we saw earlier in the class how you could have a tax calculation, right, for invoicing. Uh, but so you could have other lines here, but we're just going to have subtotal shipping and then total. And I'm going to put invoice total. I'm going to highlight those, hold Control, and highlight these. And then add some similar formatting. By the way, I have no lines showing here. The way I did that is I went up to View and uncheck that. All right, so subtotal, Alt equals. Shipping, that's just going to be a, a cell. I'm going to Control-Shift-4 there. I'm going to add some lines there. 
I'm going to add some borders there. Shipping could be something like 15 bucks. And then uh, invoice total would be alt equals, which doesn't work. I'm going to go there. Uh, later in this chat, uh, so there you go. We got that. Well, maybe one last little thing. We could put something like Or you could write, be clever, and say many happy returns or something like that, because this is a boomerang company, right? I'm going to uh, highlight that in Control-1 or come up to Alignment and say Center Across Selection, Bold, Control-B. And then I'm going to highlight below it and all the way up to the top. And I'm going to add an outside border, like thick. Now, if I Control-P, yeah, it's got a, all sorts of stuff on it. And I only want when I control P to highlight to have the invoice print out. So I'm going to go to page layout, print area and set print area. Now when I control P, it's just that. Uh, just one pa page of one. Now I think I probably accidentally already did some uh, page setup here. Page setup here. Here's the dialog box, or you can use the key. Uh, let's do that. Yeah, I already increased it a little bit to 135, just so it would fit. None of the other things I think I want, uh, but so that's the one thing I would change here. So it fits on the page. Control P, and then there you have your invoice. Now, if you actually were using this in a business. You'd actually want to, let's see, let me do this. And this one, maybe I'll do an outline, outside borders, right? So like that. You want to be careful of this and to increment that properly. But you could copy the sheet over. So that when you're finished with here, you want to keep it as a record. And you could copy this. Now you could right click, move or copy, create a copy. And then you have to say after which sheet. And I'm going to say Complete Invoice. Here, let me show you something else here. Before I do that, I clicked Escape. I'm going to click uh, Invoice. And then in parentheses, I'm going to type 1255. And as uh, now I'm going to copy it. Right click Copy, Move or Copy, Create a Copy. I'm going to say After. I'm sorry, this is before which sheet. I'm going to click on the one after the one I want it before. So it's going to be before this one. And then I'm going to click OK. Oh, notice that it increments the number. That doesn't change here, so you have to be sure and change it there. All right, so that's a little bit about creating an invoice using data validation list and uh, VLOOKUP and IF, even a little bit of IF and ROUND. All right, we'll see you next video. That is uh, the end of section 7.1. So now I can do the homework. And next uh, video, we'll start section 7.2.